Hello, I'm Christine. Welcome to Book Talk. Today we're discussing a very exciting book. Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, book two, The Hammer of Thor. This is actually our October Explosion book of the month. We're being sponsored by Disney Hyperion this month, which is so exciting. Oh my God, I love this book so much. I've expressed my love for Rick Riordan's writing many a time before. Like I love Percy Jackson so, so much. But Magnus Chase, like so far, I feel like this series might be my favorite full series of his, like as a whole. I love Percy Jackson and the Olympians. But you know, there are some books in there that I don't absolutely love as much as the other books. The, the Heroes of Olympus, one of the books doesn't have Percy much in it. Percy much don't have much Percy in it. And then the Trials of Apollo, which I have not read yet. And I'm so sorry. I'm like 80 pages into this book and I put it down. Apollo was fun to read, but he wasn't like Magnus. I forgot that I love Magnus. Not as much as Percy. Don't worry. Like there's no threat there. But damn, I love Magnus Chase. And I think this was an amazing amazing second book. It's hilarious and it made me so happy. I was just beaming reading it all the time and I love learning about Norse mythology. So if you haven't read the first book in this series, Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, which is right here. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. I love the color scheme on this. I tried to match this color scheme today. It's not as beautiful as this one though. Look how beautiful they look together though. I don't know why. I don't know how many books this is gonna be. Is it three? I feel like I asked this in my last book talk as well for sort of summer. Is this three or five or six? Three or five or I feel like it's three, but like it could be five. I don't know. If you haven't read the sort of summer yet though, I highly recommend it. Like I had so much fun reading it. Now I have a better grasp of the Norse world. If you did feel like you had a grasp of it, but you forgot and you haven't gotten to this one yet, I go into like a breakdown in my book talk for Sword of Summer. So that could be really helpful if you want to go check that out. Cause that's what I did. And I felt like, oh, okay. Past Christine has brought me up to speed. I'm good to dive on in. Being that this is book two and all, not much I can tell you without spoiling you here, except that I loved it. And I'm so excited for the next book, which comes out next fall. And it's called The Ship of the Dead. Oh, I can't wait to talk about that shit. Another thing about the Magnus Chase series, there's so many different types of people represented in these books. It's wonderful. I think that's it for the non-spoiler section. Five stars on Goodreads. That's all for now. For you folks who haven't read it yet, leave and come back once you've read it. Okay? Okay. Bye. Oh, wow. So this book ended on such a note, such a sentence. The whole last chapter, we're talking about this new mission. We have to find Loki and get his ass back in prison. It's our new quest. It's the quest. And how do we get there? Where is it? It's in Scandinavia, which is so exciting. We're gonna go to Scandinavia. And I mean, I guess we're not going to, I guess it's like in Jutenheim or something. It's like along the, whatever. We have to go to Scandinavia to get there. And we have to sail to get there. As soon as I heard that, I was like, this sounds like a job for. <laughs> and then we went to see Annabeth and they were talking. I teared up when we were the Annabeth chapter just cause like Annabeth was there and worlds colliding and we got to see it. And then she was like, maybe I can help. He wants to go to summer and me and my boyfriend will be graduated. I don't know much about the sea, but like my boyfriend does. And the last sentence of the book, I think it's time you meet Percy. I think so too. I'm so excited. Like I'm so, I'm so excited for those worlds to collide. You don't know how happy you would make me if Percy was on this trip with them. That would be everything. Magnus and Percy and Blitzen and Hearthstone and Samara and Alex and Annabeth because like Percy's not gonna go without Annabeth. One can only dream. I mean, I feel like the actual chances of them actually coming and not just helping and giving some like pro tips. A pro tip lecture from Percy and Annabeth. The chances are slim. But like, I don't care. And I'm just gonna keep that shred of hope open. And I haven't I haven't read the Trials of Paul yet. So I like really don't know where we're at with that. How much are you in need of Percibeth help? Okay, so we open the book. Magnus is meeting Sam and they're meeting an informant. And that informant is Otis. <laughs> I love Otis so much. I want him to be around in every chapter. I want a stuffed animal Otis. I want him in my life. He comes all undercover like in a trench coat and sunglasses like this is a goat. Magnus is like, Otis, shh, I'm incognito. Call me Otis. <laughs> Otis, AKA Otis. <laughs> 
climbed up into the chair. And then Otis gets killed, the poor baby. It was just such an excellent opening. And Otis didn't come back until like a million more pages in. I got so excited when I saw him again. I guess if you need a volunteer to die, I could do it. I've always loved weddings. <laughs> Let me hug you. We have a new character, Alex, who is gender fluid, which I've never read about someone who's gender fluid. I've never met someone who's gender fluid, so it was so eye-opening. Alex is a daughter of Loki or a son of Loki. Most of the time in this book, she's a daughter of Loki. And she's so cool. Her and her clay cutter were so freaking kick-ass. What a cool weapon. I love the backstory behind it and how she's claimed her own power and she can shift and everything but Loki can't control her. And then we compare that to Sam who can be controlled like a puppet when Loki is around. That's something we were not aware of in book one and has become super important for the next book. Alex has to train Sam to resist Loki's control or else how the hell is Sam ever going to fulfill her mission to Odin and get Loki back in chains? Back to Alex. There seems to be like like something going on something between her and Magnus I ship it he initially trusts her because there's something about her and he eventually realizes she reminds him of his mom a little bit which is weird but like they're funny together I like them Sam is struggling with like a shit ton of stuff in this book she really gets the short end of all the sticks she could be controlled by Loki she's being forced to marry a gross disgusting giant she's having trouble with the mirror a running joke that I love started on page 109. When they went to visit Cape Cod, Blitzen opened up the secret crack. Immediately a 10 foot square section of pavement vaporized, revealing a shaft that plunged straight down. Unfortunately, the four of us happened to be on that 10 foot square when it vaporized. We dropped into the darkness with a fair amount of screaming, most of which was mine. <laughs> So like every time there is screaming, he's like, it might have just been mine. Stop judging me. I love that about Magnus. He's not afraid to be afraid. Like the squirrel pops up against the window at the end. Everyone jumps up into fighting stance. And Magnus hides under the table. Because that squirrel's scary. I really enjoyed the very expected zombie comes to life scene. We get this scoffrong sword. And this sword can't be drawn in the presence of women. And I thought that like meant that it could physically not be drawn. I was very upset at the end when it could be drawn at the destruction of the drawer. Even as it like crumbled away, he could still sharpen it. I was, what? <sighs> I was really mad at myself that I didn't see it coming that we would be going to where Loki was. Like, I saw it coming that that's what he wanted the sword for. But I thought that they would have the wedding first, and then we'd go there. And it was so gruesome to see Loki in the crucifix position with his wife, like, all mangled. We got this whole mystery with his wife. What's her name? Siggy. Sigin. Sigin. And as soon as I heard her name, a light bulb went off my head about Vikings the TV show. Because Siggy is a character there. She's kind of with Ragnar's brother, and Ragnar's brother has this complex where he's always betraying Ragnar. They have a very Loki Thor relationship now that I'm thinking about it, and I wonder if she was modeled after Sigin. Because sometimes she is good and on our side, but sometimes she does choose the brother's side. Very interesting. I'm wondering how she's gonna play it in the future. When Loki called over the two Two girls. His wife dropped the venom in his eyes so he couldn't see to distract him. Like that was too timely to not be on purpose. And then there's a slight nod of her head to Magnus encouraging him to give the scoffrong sword to his uncle at the end. Like there's something, there's something going on there and I like it. I hate that Loki's free though. Like this is insanity. I really thought that he wasn't gonna get completely out but he did. Oh my god the guy who guards the rainbow bridge frost road biofrost. That guy is so annoying. I want to stomp on that stupid iPad and break it forever. Something we do for the first time in this book is go to Alfheim which is really exciting because we went to Niflheim which was the dwarf land and that was so much fun. Like I loved being there. It was hilarious. Alfheim not so much. That place is unpleasant. At first I thought it was gonna be super pleasant. It's like we land down and there was like no gravity and they're just hopping around. They're so light and airy. But everyone there is like an asshole. And then Hearth's dad is the biggest of the assholes. It sucked. Couldn't wait to get out of there. In that ring, nothing good ever comes of mysterious magic rings. Unless you're on the Vampire Diaries and it's to protect you from the sun. Every other ring is the worst. I'm nervous about how this ring's gonna come into play in the next book. Like this is a curse that Hurley gets when he plays the numbers and wins the lottery and lost. I'm curious about the technicalities of this curse because even though Hearth and Magnus took the treasure and got the ring from the door, 
dwarf. It's Hearth's dad who's actually wearing the ring. So like, does the curse just extend itself to all of them? Or is it now concentrated on his dad? For Hearth, it's such a struggle emotionally because when it comes down to it, his dad is his only living family. So no matter how horrible he is to him, there's a part of Hearth that cares that this man is going mad. It's a lot like Magnus and Randolph. I'm so glad at the end when Randolph was like falling down that hole to his death that Magnus finally spoke up and said, I'm your family, you stupid. When Randolph said, I want to see my family, that needed to be said. No matter how horrible he's been, he's still our family. Now I wonder if he is dead now or if he's in Helheim, which is like their version of hell and it's kind of like Tartarus. Like, can you come back from that? Is there a chance for him still to redeem himself or is he done? Will Loki fulfill his promises to bring back his family or was it a trickster promise where it was like, yeah, you'll see your family again in hell because you're dead. I still can't believe Randolph stabbed Blitzen. Like, I can't believe that happened. Back to the Loki scene at the end. I love when they enter the chamber. And he's like, welcome, Magnus Chase. Oh, God. Oh, no, no gods here. It's just me and my lovely wife, Sigyn. Say hello, Sigyn. Oh, that's right. Sigyn hasn't spoken in a thousand years ever since the Acer. We butchered our sons and abandoned us here to suffer for eternity. Well, where are my manners? How are you, Therm, son of Therm, son of Therm, son of Therm? <laughs> we all know Loki knew it was three Therms. I love it just he just adds that. He just adds that extra Therm, because that's the punch he can get in right now. I enjoyed meeting Thor's wife. She was really interesting. She's like Rapunzel, and her hair creates gold stuff. And she gave everyone makeovers for the wedding. That was like a little fun makeover montage scene whole book was so much fun. I just loved it. I'd love to hear your favorite scenes, what you think is gonna happen with this whole Percy Annabeth sea voyage thing. Please share your thoughts and theories. I am Christine. I'm at May on Twitter and Instagram. All my links are in the description below. I make videos every Tuesday. I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye!